Have y'all seen these string painting videos going around? They show up on my oh, Facebook news feed every now and then. Yeah, I did. I just dipped my fingers into black watercolor. <laughs> okay. Anyway, they show up. I watch them. I go, ooh, ooh, is it really that easy? And then sometimes friends will send them to me and say something like, oh my gosh, you need to try this. And I think to myself, oh my gosh, I need to try that. Uh, that I never do. <laughs> well, today I decided to try it. And I'm getting some really interesting results. I will say there was a little bit of a learning curve. Like, okay, yes, it is as easy as it looks on the video, but, you know, to get it exactly like the video, it takes some finesse, I'm finding. So what I did, I took this, this is one of my 20-page vinyl-covered notebooks, and I went through, and, you know, this, you can see the green here is the one I started on. You see how it's almost solid? Yeah, learning curve. I, from what I saw in the videos, it looked to me like they were pressing down as they pulled. Don't press down. I just kind of gently lay my hand here to, to hold the string in place and guide it through, but it doesn't take weight because if you put too much weight on it, then you don't get this openness like this. And another thing I learned is that um, it takes a little practice to get this funnel shape. See, I've got it kind of down right now, but I had trouble at first. See, my funnel was really wide at the bottom. And what I learned is that you have to kind of make sure that you pull your string out of the same spot. Don't let it move back and forth as you pull out. I'll show you what I mean. Let me get a fresh book. You want to see some of these? I've used all different kinds of paints. I've used acrylic paint, craft acrylic, liquid acrylic, fluid acrylic, I've used watercolor, I've used gouache, I used some silks. Um, it will basically work with any kind of paint you have that you can dip a string into. So, you know, no need to ask, can I use just regular acrylic? Can I use watercolor? Yes, yes, yes. If you can dip a string into it, you can use it. You might get a little different results depending on the paint, but from what I can tell, it just works with everything. So see, I'd already done my preliminary one, my practice ones, and see how that's wide there. So I'm going back with a second layer of different ones. I might even go crazy and add a third layer. <laughs> I don't know. I think this is just fun. See, I did not like this wide thing, and it took me really until, it took me like 10 different times, and I figured this one... I did a little bit wrong, but I was kind of getting the hang of it. I was like, oh, okay, I think I see it now. Then I got it down. So I'll show you what to do to make sure you get that funnel shape. Okay, you want to know what's fun? Take a pan of watercolors, any kind of watercolors. You know, this used to be a good set of watercolors, and then I used them all up. So, and then I had these um, watercolor crayons that I didn't really like, so I, cr ugh, I crumbled them up in the pans and just kind of made my own watercolor. And that's what this is all about. That's why it looks so grungy, but it's just color. I don't, I don't care, I just want color. So what you can do is take your string. I use probably between 18 and 30 inches, <laughs> just any size string and then dip it. I just lay it in the pans like this, and you're gonna either wanna wear gloves or just be prepared to get painty fingers. You can use a paintbrush or something. I've got this little clay tool deal to kind of push them, push your string down in there so that it gets coated. Like that. And, oops. At first I thought, okay, it's the amount of paint that's causing me a problem, but it doesn't seem to be. I tried, you know, dabbing off the string first and then doing it and seeing if that worked better than just pulling it out and going for it. And it, it seemed to work fine either way once I figured out my technique. 
Okay, I do, I'm doing it in this shape because this is what I saw in the videos. You just kind of go around, you make a loop, and then, oh, I've probably got room for another loop. You go down like that. And then what I do is close the book. I give it a little press. And then I want to see where the string is. I want to kind of make sure that it stays in that general area. I pushed the wrong button as I'm pulling it out. So as it starts to, it'll start to kind of pull one way or another depending on how it's looped up here. And I just kind of guide it back to this spot. You don't want to push down right here. And I'm just like holding the book closed. I'm not really applying any pressure. And oops, see it's pulling, so I move it back, kind of keep it coming out the same spot as much as you can, and that helps to create that funnel shape. Kind of cool, huh? And this is just with watercolors draped across the pans so you get different colors. And with watercolors, I don't have to worry about putting paper in between because you know they won't stick and this is one of my um, text weight inserts so it is going to have some bleed through on the watercolors and well some of the acrylics bleed through too but I don't mind that because then you just have a cool start on the second page right uh, go back over here what I have are liquid acrylics this was some silks that had kind of dried up so they're kind of clumpy uh, that didn't really work liquid acrylic this was some gouache this is watercolor and watercolor tube uh, tube watercolors and I like them pretty runny so I just keep adding water And I think I want, let's try this one. This is a liquid acrylic that I've mixed some colors into. I was trying to get sort of a pink because I don't have a pink liquid acrylic. And it ended up more corally, but it's really pretty. I just don't have much. And there's different brands mixed in there. I don't even know what's in there anymore. Add some water. You probably really don't need to for the liquid acrylic. I just find that it um, seems to give a smoother result or something. And then you can you can put your string just in one color or you can put it in more than one. If you have some kind of tray like this or even the little the little round one with the little holes or you know like this only round, even that would work. Just something where you can put out several colors at the same time and that makes it a little bit funner. You can dip the string directly into the jar or bottle or whatever, but um, if you're using lots of different colors, you just want to be careful not to pollute your container completely. The string's probably a little bit long for this size book. Ooh, that kind of got away from me. Okay, see where it shot out to the side? <laughs> That's where that kind of holding it to one spot really helps. But that's beautiful. All right, another one. Do we want another one? Let's do this and this. And I'm really liking that yellow. Just like that. And of course you can you can do like me and just 
do this for the joy of it, or you can actually make these into a thing. I mean, they almost just make perfect flowers all by themselves, you know, just like instant flower. Or background, or you know what? I've got, where's my, I've got a, this is one of the Traveler's Notebook size inserts that I already painted. I just went through and painted every page. And some of them I've glued stuff on. But see, they all have a um, watercolor background on them. And I'm thinking this would just be very cool to... Um, that one looks really... See, it's kind of looking muddy. I'm going to retire that string for now and get me a fresh one. I don't know if how other strings made out of other materials would work. Um, you know, if you have like something that's not 100% cotton, I just, I don't know. Give it a try and then let me know. I have a feeling these cotton strings are probably going to be the best bet. And this is probably way too much string for this page. Oh yeah, this was gouache. <laughs> I forgot. I added some pearlescent liquid acrylic to it. <laughs> I didn't realize that till I stirred it up. I forgot. Okay. So, let's, oh, all right, let's try a new shape. Woohoo! Because we have so much string, I'm just kind of letting it fall where it wants to fall. Okay, we'll see what happens it down a little bit and then just gently hold it shut just enough so you can guide your tail out of sort of the same spot if you can. Oops, I'm going to have a little bit wider down there because it got away from me, but that's okay. And where was it? There. Oh, look! Well, that turned out so pretty. I like it on a painted background. And I like our little wah 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 going on up there. <laughs> oh, this is fun. I want to do another one. Do this one right here. Okay. I always kind of try to remember to keep one end clean. That's my handle. And then I just dip the other ends. Red, green, yellow, and this this just was green, and then it was blue, and then it was pink, and now it's just a mess, but that's all right. Ooh, oh, was that it? Yeah, that was it. That, or was that my last one? 
No, that was the last one. That was the first one. That was the second one. And again, I love it. And it's easy. So y'all, this really does work. If you've seen this technique in your Facebook feed or you know on a video somewhere, it works and it's easy. And you can use any kind of paint and you just need some cheap cotton string and then some paper. You know, I'm using text weight. It's a good heavy text weight paper, but you can use, I bet I, bet I have some watercolor paper or something out of here. Yes, I do. Leftover from my stencil-a-thon. Let's see. I've even got suede text, but they're small. This is watercolor. This is watercolor. Let's just try it here. This is a 140 pound hot press watercolor paper. And let's see if there's any kind of a difference or anything like that. I'm just using the same string so it's going to be you know weird colors because it already had some colors still in there but I don't mind that because then when you pull it it's a surprise <laughs> as to what you get because I got no clue about colors <laughs> I just use the ones I like and again I've got too much string for this size card but that's okay you know a card maker you would want to have clean hands but this will end up in some kind of mixed media situation I'm holding a little bit more firm on this one because I don't want the paper sliding around they're not attached to each other like in the book so let's see what that did oh that's just not bad at all. Look, they look like um, calla lilies. Do you think calla lily when you see this? Because I do. I do every time. That is just quite beautiful. Wow. You could watercolor in a background, you know, to cover up your goobers. That is lovely. Yeah. Okay. okay. So. You get the idea this is like totally doable it's fun it's easy you can probably use what you have on hand I doubt you'd need to buy anything new um, set maybe some string if you don't have that and yeah because you can use any kind of paint that you want so go for it y'all the end <laughs>